Uh, welcome everyone to this uh, live session on designing and simulating wireless systems with integrated RF receiver. Um, my name is Abdurrahim Belaisawi and I work as an application engineer here at CS. And CS is the exclusive partners of Matchworks in the Middle East. And we work closely with uh, some of the largest aerospace defense and oil and gas companies, but also we work with small and startups and so on. So today webinar will be about, as I said in the beginning, about uh, designing and simulating wireless systems. We're gonna learn how to integrate an RF receiver into the uh, receiver and uh, see how that gonna impact the the communication link. So let's um, go through this agenda to see what we're gonna learn today. So first, an introduction. Uh, we're gonna talk about uh, the solution that Matworks have for the for wireless system design and RF, and also our motivation for the webinar. And after that, a demonstration, I will be designing and simulating a wireless system with an integrated RF receiver inside, Mat inside Simulink, but with the help of MATLAB and other tools that MATWORKS has. So, and um, the second demonstration, we're gonna include an out-of-band interference signal to see how that how, how, how we can um, improve the fidelity of the model by integrating an, uh, a blocker, at, uh, which is an out-of-band blocker. And finally, a conclusion and perspective, uh, we're gonna talk about how you can take this model and use it and how you can um, increase its fidelity and uh, also how you can generate um, what you can do uh, with this model and how you can um, increase its fidelity. Okay, so MATLAB and Simulink has um, many solutions for wireless communications and radar also. So you can design, optimize, deploy, and test wireless communication system and radar. And um, this part is for digital RF and antenna design solutions. You can jointly optimize digital RF and antenna components of an end-to-end -end wireless uh, systems. E there are, there, there are other solutions for wireless standards using tools uh, that MATLAB and Simulink have. You can design, analyze, and test standard-based 5G, Wi-Fi, LTE, and uh, so on and so forth. And um, there are solutions for um, uh, artificial intelligence for wireless communication, such as you, uh, classification of RF signals. You can use machine learning and deep learning together with MATLAB and other toolboxes to 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 um, develop machine learning and deep learning algorithms. And finally, we all want to deploy into the hardware. So from this uh, solution, you can um, generate uh, hardware, uh, generate code to deploy on the hardware, or you can also connect your hardware to the to, to, to MATLAB and Simulink and test over, over the air, okay? So our um, webinar, we're gonna talk more about digital RF and uh, we're gonna talk more about digital and RF. We're gonna see how to design an RF receiver and integrate it into the receiver chain, okay? So why Simulink for wireless system design? Because Simulink can model time so Simulink approach is based on time, hence it is suitable for dynamic system modeling and simulation, and the wireless system is always a um, dynamic system. Simulink can be used to uh, incorporate uh, multiple domains all in one model, okay? MATLAB and Simulink work together. If you have a piece of code in MATLAB, you can use it with, with, uh, with Simulink or inside Simulink. And finally, you can move from the behavioral model to the implementation. You can generate C, C++, VHDL code, and so on and so forth, okay? The motivation from this webinar is to see how we can uh, integrate an RF receiver into the, into the receiver and how we how this is gonna uh, increase the fidelity of my wireless system model, and for that we're gonna use some tools and blocks from um, RF block sets and an app called RF Budget Analyzer to do the uh, analysis of the RF budgets and also to export to uh, RF block sets. So this is the the model that we're gonna design. Um, the, the first demonstration. 
this is um, basically a wireless system design and uh, and it has an rf receiver here so we are embedding an rf receiver into the into the receiver and uh, integrating with it the, the the signal processing or the signal detector okay and these are the results that we're gonna get so now let's jump into matlab and simulink and start the design of this simulink model okay so this is the uh, wireless system with embedded RF receiver. This is a template. Uh, if I run it, nothing will happen because these blocks are already commented out. And in the transmitter, I have, I, I have this uh, uh, subsystem, which is actually uh, empty. And I'm going to design the uh, transmitter or what we call the baseband signal generator. But before that, I want to talk about uh, what we call uh, um, model properties in which I'm embedding um, a, um, with some parameters in a function. Okay, so let me go to model properties and show you the function that's gonna um, generate uh, these parameters and these parameters, I'm going to use them for different blocks. Okay, so we use actually this kind of callbacks when we have some parameters that we're going to need for different blocks. So we have these parameters and we need to use them for different blocks. So once you load the model, this function, this callback function will run and you're going to get the parameter in the MATLAB workspace and hence you can use them with different blocks. Okay. Let's now start the design of the baseband signal generator. Uh, we need first a, um, uh, a message to transmit okay so for that you can use a random integer uh, um, generator okay there, is, there are different ways to get the um, blocks to the canvas this is similar canvas there are different ways you can maybe just double click this way and you you write the the name of the block or some few letters of the of the name for this example, I need the random uh, integer generator. I can get it this way, but there is a different way, uh, another way, which is classical way. You can go to the library browser and you write the name of the block in this, in the, in this, um, in this field here. Or if you don't know which block you need exactly, you can maybe scroll down to the toolbox or to the block set. Uh, for example, I can go um, to this, let's say, DSP, um, this DSP system toolbox, and I'm looking for something for filtering. I will go just to the filtering, and I want some uh, some adaptive filters. Then I go to adaptive filters, and I will have a variety of filters that I can choose from. Okay, this is and to get it inside Simulink, you can just drag and drop, and you're gonna get it. Okay, this is a, a block that we don't need. I just, I'm just showing you another way to get the block inside the canvas. Okay, let's now change the parameter of this um, of this block. And uh, before that, I want just to highlight that for for all simulating block, you have a help. You can click on the help and learn further about the the block. But you have a small description here that you might just need to read it, and you will be you will be able to figure out what, what are these parameters and so on. So this random integer gener generator generates random uniformly distributed integers in the range of 0 to m minus 1, okay? So let's now um, uh, set the parameters for this random generator. So I will set it to 2 power m. So m is already known inside my model. Okay, because it's in the callback function, if you remember, if you remember that, so. And for the source of initialization, I will set it to parameter and I will set this value to 37. This is just an initialization. I don't want um, a fully random uh, randomization. I want to set some initialization. And for the sample time, I have it already. 
and the frame is frame per is the is the frame length okay and then you need to apply these changes you click on apply and here we go we have now the random generator the next block is to modulate to the modulator to modulate this information this message we can call it um, message this is the information that we want to transmit okay now i will go ahead and um, get the the modulator i will use a 16 quam modulator the one called rectangular this is the one that i'm going to use okay and i can first set the parameters this is actually the modulation order we call it mra number okay so i will set it to two uh, power m okay and um, the inputs the my the, the the input to my to my modulator is integer so i don't need to change this also this i will not i will not change and the normalization method i want the average power okay and that's all once you are done you again need to apply the changes and for this block which is the qua modulator you need maybe to check for the constellation this is how it does look like the constellation of my modulated signal okay now i have the modulator i can go ahead and connect it to the message block and later on i need to um, use a matched filter because we cannot just send a rectangular um, signal we need to um, shape the or uh, change the shape of the signal before sending it through the channel so i will need a pull shaping filter there are many uh, blocks that simulink have okay so one of them is this riser riser cosine transmit filter okay i'm going to use this one for the transmission and for the rece re reception there is another filter it has basically the same name only the difference is the the other one we use it for the for the reception okay i will not change this parameter only the output sam samples per symbol i will set it to m okay and um, the input processing this case is column as channel okay and um, I don't want this low pro, uh, low multi rate processing. I will enforce it to single rate uh, processing, and then I will go ahead and this is basis frame. Okay, I will go ahead and apply these changes. Okay, because this is a filter, maybe we can analyze it further. We'll um, um, plot the response of this filter. So to do so this block has this view filter response feature you can click on it and you're gonna gonna get you're gonna get this tool called filter visualization tool with the magnitude response of your filter okay but you can also um, plot other information for example you can show the filter information this is the information of the filter it tells you about the structure, uh, the interpolation factor, the filter length, and which is more important, the stability of the filter and uh, the, co the implementation costs. So if you want to um, design, a, uh, let's say you want to design it, you will need these uh, components to, to do the design of your filter. So now I can click OK, and I will need a an buffer, so I can um, convert the frame into scalars. Okay, and I will connect it this way. This is the way you can connect uh, two blocks inside Simulink. Okay, what I can do now. I can maybe um, measure the power 
at the at the output of this um, uh, subsystem. Okay, this is a subsystem, and they have this block inside it. And I will need an out port, so I can get the this port outside and link it to the other blocks in my model. I will need an out port. This is an out port. Okay. So now if I go back to this subsystem, I have this port here. So I can I can connect it to the rest of my 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 model. Okay. But before that, this is only the baseband signal generator. We need also a a, a channel, a medium, because this um, signal will be transmitted through a medium. So we need a we need to model as well this uh, this medium. There are different ways, uh, or, or there are different blocks to model the channel. One of them is free space uh, path loss. Okay, we can open it and see how this gonna impact our signal, the input signal. So it reduces the amplitude of the input signal by the amount specified. So we're gonna specify the amount of the losses. I will set it to 115, okay? And then I will go ahead and apply the changes. So after that, I can connect, con connect the, okay, seems like you have another connector here. I'll delete it. So now I have my channel and the input to it is the baseband signal, okay? I can maybe go ahead and measure the power at the output of this transmitter and medium. The output of this transmitter is, or let's say the output of the, at, at the, at, at the outputs of the medium is the inputs for my RF receiver. So we can talk about the power at the input uh, at the input of the RF receiver. Th there is a way to um, calculate or to compute this power. There is a block called power meter. I can use it to compute the power. Okay, I can rotate it. Control you hold control, then you click on R, and you can rotate it this way. So this is the, my power meter. It's like a um, voltmeter and so on. We have blocks for different measurements. So for this one, I'm going to select the dB watts and I want the average power. And for simul simulation um, method, I want this interpreted execution. But you can select this code generation and it's gonna accelerate the the simulation of your model. Okay. So to display this result to this power, I will need a display. Okay. This is a display. I can rotate it the same way I did for the power meter. Okay. Can rotate it this way. And now we have my transmitter and medium ready. I can maybe go ahead and simulate it. Uh, to do so, you need to run the simulation. But before that, maybe you can check for the solver. To do so, you need to go to this uh, solver here and you click on it, then click on view solvers, solver settings, okay? And you change this um, uh, simulation time and the solver based on your model, okay? so it. If it has some continuous states, maybe you can select another one. For this case, we need this discrete solver with a fixed step, okay? There are multiple um, parameters that you might need to, to check before you run the simulation, okay? So uh, now my model is ready. My transmitter and medium model is ready to run. I can go ahead and run it. So if it's working properly, and as you can see, the power at the output of the channel is minus 120, and it's in dB watts, means it's a very, very, very small uh, power. I will now need to connect my, my uh, transmitter and medium block or subsystem 
to to the receiver so for the receiver i'm going to show you another way to model and export to model analyze and to and after that export to simulink okay let me first connect uh, the the transmitter and medium this signal this is a signal maybe you can give it a label i will call it uh, the um, receiver or the rx input okay and i'm using this let me uncomment this okay i'm going just to comment out these blocks and connect this one let me know um go inside this rf receiver and see what we have there so these basically are blocks from uh, rf block set that you can you can drag and drop and model your rf receiver okay but there is another way uh, an easy way to do so we can maybe do that inside matlab and after that we export to the rf budget anal anal analyzer we analyze the budget there the noise the power and so on and after that we export to simulink so let me go to matlab and show you how i did that so this is a matlab live script in which i'm modeling a cascade rf receiver okay and after that i will open the rf budget analyzer app which is an interactive tool to analyze the rf receiver and after that export to uh, add a block set and we and once we have the block or the blocks for my rf receiver i can just copy paste and integrate into the rest of the model okay so how you model an rf receiver components using matlab there are different functions so if you know about if you know the the the, the function you can't just try it but there are, there's a different way maybe you can try also if you have the s parameters for your uh, component rf component you can use this import which is a function that accepts this um, s parameters as input argument and we're gonna have a, a first element in my in my rf receiver which is the rf filter okay so what i'm doing here i'm creating an array of of components okay the first component is the filter for the amplifier i'm using this function called amplifier and it has different uh, attributes or let's say it has different uh, properties you can set a name the gain the noise figure and the output uh, uh, intercept um, num uh, order tree okay so these are the parameters for the amplifier. I have now my second component moving to uh, to the um, to the uh, demodulator because it's a receiver. We're gonna do the demodulation, but uh, you might need here to use this function called the demodula modulator. But the only difference between modulation and demodulation component RF component is just the conversion type if it's down then it's a demodulator if it's up it's a modulator we are setting it here to down because we are aiming to do the demodulation okay and the same for the amplifier this is uh, uh, this is uh, another amplifier to um, amplify the uh, uh, demodulated signal okay and finally i'm going to uh, create the error budget okay and open it after that in the error budget analyzer app let me go ahead and run the script so this is the error budget analyzer app and by default if you run it from uh, from uh, from the common window or from a MATLAB live script and you pass the error budget object to it, it will open with that 
uh, circuits. So as you can see here, I have my circuit. This is the component. I have this one, which is the at a filter, the LNA, noise, um, low noise am amplifier, then the, the modulation, and finally I will do the amplification. You have some results here, okay? So uh, these are the freeze uh, analysis, okay? There is another type of analysis that you can also try is the harmonic balance analysis and it's just one click to start the analysis and you're going to get the result but this is not this is not that fast as the freeze analysis so sometimes it's it's enough to just do the freeze analysis and look at the at the power at the outputs okay we started with this output at the component number 1 and at the component number 4 we are, we we have this power which is way better or way higher than this power okay another um, parameters or another measurement that you that you can check is the uh, signal to noise ratio okay and um, if you want to uh, model or add some other components there is this elements um, library from where you can get some other components and add them to the to the um, to the RF system, your RF system. Okay, you can also add antennas and so on. For us, this is the component that we need for the RF receiver, and uh, its uh, its input frequency is 2.45. And another thing that I want to talk about if is this app has some. Um, built-in or ready-to-use templates. For example, if I'm designing a receiver, I can use this, RF re this receiver, and they will need just to change the parameters of the components. If I'm designing a, a transmitter, I can click on transmitter, and I will get the parameter. Uh, I, will, I will need to change the parameter of the blocks of my, uh, of, of, of my uh, transmitter, okay? And once you are done and happy with the uh, analysis results, you can export and you have multiple uh, options for exporting. You can export to the MATLAB workspace, you can export to MATLAB scripts, you can export to error block sets, measurement test bench, t test bench and also to RF system, okay? For this, um, uh, demonstration I'm going to export to RF block set because I'm using Simulink and I need the blocks okay so I can just click RF block set and I will get the um, model of my RF receiver you have now the RF receiver modeled using Simulink blocks that you can find in the RF block set block, uh, RF block set library, okay? This model, you can run it. If you want, you can run it to double check the output power comparing uh, to the uh, input power, maybe. You can, we can do it this way. So it's, uh, it's simulating this RF system and it, it's giving me here the power, the output power, and this is the input power. So looking at the power at the output, it's telling me that my RF receiver is working properly. It's improving the, the, the power at the output of it, and also using the app, we saw that other parameters are also um, better than the signal when we talk about signal if we compare the measurements at the output of the receiver we have good results okay can stop it what i can do now i can um just get this uh this uh blocks and this rf receiver i can copy all these parameters all these blocks this way 
and then I can go ahead and paste them here. I already did, did this and uh, I, it's basically the same, the same. I didn't change anything. So what I did, I exported to Simulink pro, uh, to RF block sets and I copied these blocks. Only I removed this. Um, uh, let me go back to the exported model. I just removed this function because they are here just to support the calculation of the output power. And also this one is just to support the conversion of the uh, input power. So I don't need them. I need only the blocks. So looking at the RF receiver, this is the, this is the uh, blocks that you need to model that. And all these models can be found in the RF block sets libraries. Okay. Now we can, we can run this model to check uh, if it's working when we integrate it with the transmitter and the medium. Okay, I'll go ahead and let me comment this. I still don't need this. I can run it. And, and here we go, you can check the, um, the simulation progress in this power. So my RF receiver is working properly. And now we need to detect the message that he sends. Okay. I sent a message here that I will need for the, um, for the calculation of the error, error rates when modeling the uh, digital baseband detector. Okay. So what I will do in this case, I will just um, get a go to block. This is a go to block and I will connect it to the random generator. I will call it message. And the tag visibility need to be uh, global so I can use it outside of this subsystem. Okay. And maybe I can give a name to this message. I can uh, name it message. This is the information that we are transmitting. Okay. Next is to um, convert these analog signals that we have at the output of the receiver, RF receiver. We need to convert to uh, continuous uh, states or to continuous, continuous signals. Okay. Um, for that reason, I will need an ADC. Okay, this is my ADC, and it has two inputs. Okay, these inputs are the I channel and Q channel, and it's based on two um, idealized or ideal um, ADCs. So it's used two because we have two signals: the IQ uh, channel signal and the the I channel signal and Q channel signal. And then I want to get back my, uh, my, my signal. Okay. So to do so, I will need a uh, real to Im uh, real image to complex converter. So this is just a block to convert from complex, uh, from uh, real and image um, signals to a, 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 to a, a complex signal. Okay, and this is what I have at the output. This is a complex signal. Okay. So I can go ahead and run it again to see if it's working. Yeah, it's working properly. I'm not getting any errors. Means that my design is correct. Okay. And um, yeah, now we have the signal at the outputs of the ADC. I will need to use a, uh, this uh, DC blocker. This is our ready block. You don't need to build it. It's already um, in one of Simulink libraries. I will just uncomment it and I'll show you what it does exactly. So this block allows to um, block the DC component from an input signal. So at the input, I have a signal that has a DC component. With this block, 
I will just remove the DC component. This is what what does this uh, DC blocker, okay? And then I will um, send this signal to the uh, baseband receiver or to the baseband detector. I have the I have this subsystem here. It's basically the same workflow for we did for the transmitter. It's the same workflow, but instead of and buffering, we are buffering here. We are getting the we are getting the frame out of these scalars, and then we need uh, we need this phase frequency offset to compensate for as parameters. I can open it and show you the parameters that it has. It has a phase off offset and frequency offset. So we want to compensate for the phase. That's why we are setting this phase to 59, okay? And after that, we need a riser cosine receive filter. We used a transmit filter for the transmitter. In this case, we are like doing the opposite uh, operations. So we are using the receive filter for pulse shaping. And these are the parameters. They are almost the same and the same you can do for this filter. You can view its uh, response this way you just click view filter response and you will be able to see the its uh, magnitude response and other information using this filter visualization tool okay after that uh, i will need to uh, automatically uh, regulate or control the gain i don't want to use a, a gain a constant gain for all the signal i need an automatic gain controller that's why I'm using this AGC. And after that, the demodulator. We modulate the signal or the message using a QAM, 16 QAM demodulator. And we are doing the inverse operation here. We are getting back the, uh, the message that we send using this uh, 16 QAM demodulator. And here I'm just using this go to, so I can use this signal laser for visualization. Let's go back. Now we have all my components ready. I mean, the the design is ready of my wi wireless system. I can now go ahead and analyze it. Analyze it in time domain and frequency domain, but also we can plot the constellation diagram of this uh, mod modulate, modulate, modulated signal. And we're gonna see how we can interpret these results. Okay, I will uncomment this and also this one. And I'll talk a bit about this, uh, these tools that I'm using for the visualization and analysis of the uh, signals, different signals, uh, RF signals and baseband signals. I'll just need to uncomment them. Okay, so what I'm using, I'm using a spectrum analyzer. This is a spectrum analyzer. It does the, it does the, um, uh, spectrum uh, computing and displaying so you can do both of them but you can also run the simulation from inside it okay and for now we don't have any data so uh, that's why we are not getting here any plots and um, another block that I'm using here is is the error rate calculation so we are calculating the error rate to um, evaluate the communication link and if we were able to uh, recover or detect the message that we sent. So this is the parameters for this block, okay? And the input to this block are the, the uh, transmitted signal and the receiver signal. This is, uh, or the message that is sent, this, the message that we want to, uh, I want to, to detect and the detected signal it's like comparing comparing the message and the detected message and displaying the error rate here and some other parameters that we're gonna see in the next few minutes. Okay, let me run the model. Looking at the constellation diagram, diagram we can see that we have this uh, constellation 
a new law. This is the um, the modulated signal at the uh, it's here at the uh, sorry uh, what I'm yeah this is the modulated signal at the output of the RF receiver. It's a bit noisy and we ca if we look at this we can see that the communication link is not perfect but if we go ahead and look at the uh, symbol error rates it's almost uh, we, i would not say zero but it's close to zero and these are the incorrect uh, samples or symbols and these are the correct symbols another another way to analyze the um, the signal at the inputs and at the outputs of my RF receiver is to display their spectrums or their power spectrums. Looking at this uh, yellow uh, plot, it's very attenuated, but at the output I have my signal, it's a bit different, but it was, uh, it has been amplified by my RF, uh, RF, RF circuits and they have now this, uh, um, the signal and its magnitude it's almost between 50 and 100 so this is a way to analyze the um, the output and the uh, input of an rf system you can do it this way you can analyze in frequency domain and we can do also some other analysis This is this is another way to analy analyze the um, the uh, communication link. So you can do it in frequency domain. You can check the uh, symbol error rates, or you can use the constellation diagram. Okay. So this is for the demonstration uh, number one. For the second demonstration, we are just adding a we are adding a um, a interferer, okay? We're adding an interferer and we want to see how that's gonna impact the uh, communication link. I'll open it. This is my, um, this is basically the same model, but I added that baseband interference, interfering signal, which is based on um, MPSK modulator, okay? And it's almost the same, uh, uh, blocks that I'm using for this uh, signal baseband signal generator for the blocker, and I'm using this concatenation this concatenation uh, block to do the concatenation between the two signals. So this is the only difference between the, this demonstration and the previous demonstration. It can, I can go ahead and run it and see how this is gonna impact the symbol error rate. So it's still uh, uh, running the simulation and looking here, we can see the progress, okay? But we can also uh, keep an eye on this uh, display and you will be able to see the, uh, the error rate and how it is changing over uh, simulation time. Okay. It's it's getting better the error rates. Um, we have also the uh, um, the spectrums that we can open. This is this this is the spectrum of the interferer. Okay. Sorry. So this is this this is the spectrum of my uh, signal of interest. Let's say that if we can say that, and this is the spectrum of my interferer. And it, as you can see, if it, it it's an out of band interferer, and hence it will not have a big 
impacts on the communication link, but certainly will increase the fidelity of my model. Okay. So this is the uh, simulation results. We got a uh, error error uh, error rate, which is uh, which is higher than before. If we compare with the uh, last demonstration, the the error rate is now higher. Means that we are getting some incorrect uh, information. We are not getting uh, the message completely the message that we transmit from this baseband signal generator we are not getting it completely at the output of the receiver and we can also have a look at this uh, i can close some of this i don't need this need the constellation diagram the constellation diagram is almost the same because the error rate is also close to the to the previous error rates or the previous demonstration. You can also, um, as I said before, you can analyze the in the baseband uh, domain. These are the message spectrum. Okay, this is the baseband signal is the message that we transmit transmitted, and in blue is the received information if we look at this spectrum is almost the same um, if we relate or according to the frequency information it's almost the same but error rate is saying something different we have some error here and we are not getting completely the uh, information that we sent and this is because of the rf receiver impairments imperfection that's has been added by this circuit and also by the interferer. So this was all for the second demonstration. For the uh, for the rest of this webinar, we will need to go to the slides. And these are the results. As I said, for uh, the design and simulation of a wireless system with just an integrated RF receiver, these are the results. This is the this is the symbol error rate. This is what we got. And for the second demonstration, this is the this is what we 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 saw. And these are the results. And this is showing the uh, the signal of interest or the at the at the um, input of the RF receiver. And this is the the spectrum of the blocker signal. And as you can see, the error rate is now higher a bit comparing to the uh, error rate for uh, the model without the blocker. Okay. So now we learned how to design uh, a Simulink model, a wireless system inside Simulink using different blocks from uh, uh, communication toolbox from RF block sets and also from the SP system toolbox and other blocks from from Simulink itself. I can use this model actually and um, improve it by embedding an RF transmitter into it by embedding antennas and at the receiver and the transmitter. I can also test for different channel models. We use a free space path loss channel, which is a very simple channel. We can maybe think about the um, IWGN channel or a fading channel or a channel that includes all of this impairment. And we can also generate code from the from the um, algorithms, uh, from the filters, and so on. We can generate C and C++ code. We can gener generate VHDL code. And we can, even before that, do some test bench using different tools that RF uh, block set and communication toolbox uh, have. And um, maybe you noticed that the simulation uh, was not that fast because we, we are designing a, a multi-domain model. Means that we have uh, components from different uh, domains, from RF, from baseband, and so on, and from also discrete domain. So uh, Similink had to deal with all this, and 
there there are another um, techniques that you can maybe try to accelerate the um, simulation or to run multiple simulation simulations in the same time let's say i want to optimize that uh, error i can't try for different parameters for my filters or for my um, uh, modulator and the modulator and simulate the the, the model the, many times so for that reason i can use this parsim which is a function that allow you to do that uh, we we learned uh, how to design a wireless system and how to embed an rf receiver into it and we also um, do, did the evaluation of the communication link and so on um, and we saw that this model can be used to um, uh, design advanced wireless system models. One more thing that I want to talk about is that the error budget analyzer and MATLAB Simulink can be used for radar uh, design. If you if you are designing a radar, you can you can use Simulink to design it. Radar is a dynamic system, so you can use Simulink for that uh, for that specific design. And you you will need just to um, follow the same workflow for the budget analysis tool. It's basically the same workflow. So um, we saw today how to design wireless system, but for radar it's almost the same, and you can use you, you can definitely use Simulink for that purpose together with the blocks from the RF block sets and radar toolbox and so on, and you can design your uh, your radar system and simulate it in Simulink.